Ramai is morose. He's nearing 30 with his career as a musician going nowhere and his eight-year marriage to Martine souring. Then Martine dies in a car crash, and Marion, her 14-year-old daughter, wants to stay with Ramai rather than go to her father's house. Ramai likes the idea, he loves her, he's raised her, and she offers him emotional responsibility. Marion's father objects, but she's determined, so he relents. Soon she tells Ramai she finds him attractive, that she's now a woman, and she wonders why they can't be lovers. Ramai is appalled, but he weakens, missing her when she spends Christmas with her dad. What if they do become lovers? What next? And what if a woman closer to his age enters the picture? Moments after she declares to her lover that her career is failing because they want younger ones, a photographer's model is killed in an automobile accident. The dead woman's 29-year-old lover and her 14-year-old daughter barely bother to shed a tear before embarking on the lengthy flirtation that Bertrand Blier's new movie, Beau Pierre, is about. The lover resists the daughter's advances for a while, protesting, I'm not old quite old enough to go for little girls. But he turns out to be wrong. So Beau Pierre, which opens tonight at the New York Film Festival and Sunday at the Baronet, would seem to have one of the more objectionable premises from a director who is no stranger to objectionable tales. But Beau Pierre, far from echoing the misogyny of Mr. Blear's earlier work, sounds a halfway sentimental note. If the affair between stepfather and stepdaughter is presented with something less than Nabokovian acuity, its exploitative side is also minimal. In fact, Mr. Blear tells this story very gently, with as much attention to the humor of the situation as to its eroticism. It is Marion who instigates the romance over the protestations of Ramai. Marion goes after her man with a determination that becomes amusing, especially when she announces, I'm just here, available, the woman is object. She's nothing of the kind, in spite of the way Mr. Blear's camera lingers over Miss Bess's cultish good looks. As the stepfather and beautiful 14-year-old nymphet share their grief under the same roof, the girl reveals an uncommon maturity as she insinuates herself into the stepfather's life by taking on her mother's responsibilities and demanding her place in his bed. What follows is an unemotional, matter-of-fact, tastefully presented tale of two people whose familial love morphs into something more as they grapple with all the issues which come with their extraordinary and taboo relationship. Beau Pierre aims for the head and ricochets off the heat but leaves the crotch alone, not Lolita and not a film about pedophilia or seduction. This flick should be an interesting watch for anyone into films about atypical romantic relationships. Marion, as Miss Bess plays her, is an extremely changeable creature, childish one minute and precocious the next, and her variability keeps Ramai off guard. The film begins with a brief appearance by Nicole Garcia and ends with a particularly disarming performance by Natalie Bay. But during the lengthy middle portion of the story, Mr. Blear never shows any adult women who might emphasize Marion's girlishness. He wants to make the range of her attitude seem as remarkable to the audience as it does to Ramai, and he succeeds. Though Beau Pierre exhibits no real emotion over the mother's death, the child's bereavement or anyone's loss of innocence, it does get off to an extremely morose start. Mr. DeWare is in an unenviable position in this lengthy section of the movie, because he is called on to do indulge in prodigious and unrelieved self-pity. He works as a cocktail pianist, and so the soundtrack is filled with bluesy piano music. To this accompaniment, Mr. DeWare wrestles silently and tremulously with his conscience. Far from signaling anyone's moral downfall, the onset of the affair comes as a relief, insofar as it means that Stéphane Grappelli's violin will now dominate the soundtrack and Mr. DeWare will show signs of life. Once he acclimates his audience to the idea of the stepfather-stepdaughter liaison, Mr. Blear depicts the romance very sweetly. Never entirely abandoning his misgivings, Ramai makes the courtship a mixture of apprehensiveness and celebration. And Marion, far from being injured by the attentions of a man twice her age, appears to flourish. As in the earlier, teasing portion of the movie, there's a false naivete at work here. But there's also a great deal of conviction. Mr. Blear's considerable accomplishment is to make his own directorial motives appear almost as ingenuous as those of the lovers. Beau Pierre, which Mr. Blear has described as an ode to the fair sex and to womanhood in its purest form, is not a particularly knowing work, but it's a tender, entertaining one. And if the high spirits that filled get out your handkerchiefs and going places are somewhat subdued here, so are the uglier, more contemptuous elements of those films. Their absence isn't anything to mourn. Beau Pierre, written and directed by Bertrand Blier, in French with English subtitles, cinematography, Sacha Vierney, edited by Claude and E. Merlin, music by Philippe Sard, a co-production of Sarah Films and Antenne 2, released by New Line Cinema, at Alice Tully Hall, part of the 19th New York Film Festival, 
running time 120 minutes this is not rated thank you for watching see you in the next one